they would go, I am done with this. So ever since she left, it's been nothing but gawky, gawky, gawky. And you and your drinking. If I hear you say one more word about Goggy, I am walking out. I am locking you in the Hello Project offices for the night, and I am walking out. Look, he's graduating. Oh, God. My name is Jeremy. And I'm Jake. This week we're talking about the B-sides to Ren I Hunter. Crab buck, crab buck, Ren I Hunter. Crab buck, crab buck. Spirit fingers, spirit crab fingers. <laughs> Jeremy is in a state of emotional turmoil over things. Again. Again. Constantly. Always. I'm done with your crap. So I'm not gonna lie, this single, going through it and listening to the B-sides, was very hard for me again. Knowing that Gaggy's not in the group, that she's my favorite, and having to kind of go through this whole journey of seeing the end of it all, it makes me sad again. Now, much like when I graduated, Gaggy got her own special solo B-side. Uh, however, the entire group did a, another B-side as well. So I'm gonna start off with Watashiga. Ite Kimi Ga Iru, which is a song about a girl who kind of is interested in this guy and she wants to pursue the relationship and kind of see where it goes and even if it doesn't necessarily end in marriage, it'll be okay because they're gonna tr see what happens. And in a lot of ways, this is very much like Renai Hunter, which is about establishing feelings and establishing a thought about a guy and maybe wanting to pursue that in the future and kind of seeing where that's gonna lead. In many ways, this particular song reminds me a lot of an up-tempo, a little bit more of like a rock, um, funky jazz party version of Popcorn Love. It even includes a lot of the similar yas and yays throughout the entire thing and a lot of very similar chanting and cheers. And I think just on a whole, it's very similar even as far as the line distribution is concerned where everyone really got to have a sparkling solo and I enjoyed that it was very similar to Popcorn Love, which is the first B-side that Gaki ever appeared in. It was just kind of like a typical morning musume B-song. And I don't mean like B-side, I mean like there's A-songs, there's B-songs, there's C-songs. To me, this B-side in particular, as far as the lyrics go, was very di different um, than other B-sides that involve establishing feelings for some guy and wanting to pursue it, is that a lot of times these particular songs that Sungu likes to write are like this end-all be-all if it doesn't work out the world is over and everything is done for and it's got to work out with this guy or it's never going to work out with anybody else and i feel like that's kind of how sunku writes these up-tempo upbeat poppy songs that are about initiating a romance of some kind and i feel like he always goes for like doom and gloom with these kind of songs and it was nice and refreshing to hear a b-side that didn't involve some kind of doom and gloom end that it was really just happy and fun throughout the entire thing all of the girls sounded fantastic in this b-side i really enjoyed all their voices together i enjoyed the way that they were all organized i especially really loved gucky's bridge and i think that she just sounded so wonderful and so pure and her voice was so strong and powerful and she was what's the word she was so stable in this song and it really makes me wish that she had more of these kind of bridges throughout the platinum era when she really had a chance to do those because I think that she handles bridges and though that kind of soft middle piece very well and I think her voice stands up to the softness because her voice is so strong and I just love singing Gaki's praises and it's wonderful to hear her voice again because I think that she is absolutely one of the best singers that the group has ever had. Really good vocal performances from everyone involved, but let's be real, the real star right now is Gaki's solo b-side, Smiles and Tears. Now, 
Gaki, Nigaki Risa is and will forever probably be one of the greatest, strongest, most quality voices to ever grace Morning Musume. She's right up there with I. Her and I, to me, are really some of the greatest, strongest, enduring voices that had the most power, the most quality, the most versatility. Um, I think Oda Sakura has some of that potential uh, already now uh, in the current lineup. But over the years, there haven't been a lot of people who I was just like, wow, she's going to go places with that voice. Gaki is one of those people who almost, I don't know, this sounds so bad, but it was al is almost too good for just to be stuck in Morning Musume. Fortunately, uh, Nigaki had a love for Morning Musume, and, and I think that's really reflected in her time in Morning Musume. Uh, but I feel like she was like such a voice. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the other girls, like yeah, they belong in a girl band, but someone like I and someone especially like Nigaki, like why couldn't they have had awesome solo careers like Utada or Ayamatsu Sura? Which, speaking of which, that is the original artist of Egao ni Namida. I have expressed numerous times that I love it when B-sides have music videos, and I love it when the members get something really special. So far we have only seen a couple of these special B-sides for the specific members when they graduated, and that was the very first one. We didn't actually get a music video, but we got a special B-side for um, Fukuda Asuka in the first generation. We got one for Yasuda K in the second generation. We got one for Takahashi Ai, and we got one for Niyaki Risa, and more recently we got one for Tanaka Reina. And the three of them, in the end, have gotten MVs, and I'm assuming that when Sayumi graduates, she's gonna get an MV as well for whatever B side that they decide to do for her. And I am appreciative that this song got chosen for a multitude of reasons but let's first off talk about Matsuda Aya in Aya's original version it's got kind of more of this weird like honky-tonk country piano vibe to it almost which is cute but I kind of was over it not too long after it started she has a fantastic voice but I just wasn't hip on the orchestrations. I think that the way that her voice stands out against this song, it really needs kind of that edgy, rough, jagged sound to the song because that's kind of her voice and it's not necessarily soft and sweet. It's really just powerful and, and, and there and you feel the presence of her voice. And I, I think that the original really had to have a strong instrumental backing track to stand up to her voice. And I think that for Ega Ni Namida, that they use for Nigaki, I really feel like they softened it. And I feel personally that they dropped the tone a little bit of it and they took away a little bit of the roughness of it and like that rock edginess that they even gave to Kame Eri when she covered this particular song. They added a lot more synth, a much more poppy, you know, highs and lows sound to it, more of a dance beat sound. And uh, frankly, it complimented Gaki's voice so beautifully, she just sounds amazing in that beat side. Not only does she sound amazing, in the accompanying MV, she looks flawless. The music video consists of uh, Gaki in a kind of like antique ramshackle looking room. All Everything's worn, the furniture's worn, uh, it's kind of very gray and dingy. And then she's wearing um, these really this really fun oversized sweater that says, You make me smile. And then it's been like cut up and re-sewn, so it's like, you know trendy and fashionable. She's got this big poofy skirt on, pink cowboy boots, and then this crazy like pastel colored top hat with all these crazy googly things in it. And uh, I think it's a cool little like visual dichotomy for the video where you have Gaki in these kind of fun crazy clothes. She's the smiles and then you have the room which is kind of somber and dingy and that's the Namida Namida. The music video was very similar to Ai-chan's graduation music video and I appreciated that it was filled with pictures of her and the, the group and her with the group and I think that it was nice to have a tie to Ai-chan because they were both very good friends and she wanted to graduate with her but at the same time she wanted to stick around and kind of help Morning Musume recover from Ai-chan leaving. 
And so I think it was nice that they included those touches of the pictures, and I think that really suited Gaki in a lot of ways. She had this cute R earring hanging from her ear. She had this adorable R shirt in half of the music video she was wearing a sweater that said you make me smile and I enjoyed that they included that costume piece because it ties the title of the song to the actual music video and we usually don't see ties between the title and the actual music video usually we have like these really obscure costumes that you have to think symbolically about like how they even got there or maybe it was just something that was like ooh this is cute let's get this so I think it was nice that we had that that costume piece in this music video. Her hat was was fun, it had little smiley pins all over it, and again, it was just like a, a nice bridging from the title into the actual music video itself. The last thing that I noticed is that she had a little suitcase next to her through half of the music video, and that suitcase was green, and I thought it was just a nice connection to her member color, and it's like, she's getting ready to leave the group, and she's okay with it and you know now she's taking her selfies and is going to attach it to this note that says thank you dear my friends you know you've all been great I'll miss you but you know I got my little green suitcase Gaki's ready to go on and move out of Morning Musume and, and move into bigger and better things that I would like to pursue beyond graduation and don't worry everything's going to be okay afterwards so it'll all be good just leave it in the hands of Reina and Sayu. For as much of a hoopla and a to-do as was made for I and her graduation and they make quite the to-do for I. There was something almost more sincere to me about Gaki's send-off. I got to design the concert and the costumes and she got her own Sing You Now song written for her with her own video and you know it was all very grandiose and stuff um, but it was almost a little too much pomp of all pomp, pomp and circumstance almost. It was a show more than anything. And it was a fun song and it was a great song about not wanting to ever forget and to want to hold on to the memories that she had with those around her and this particular person in her song. Where Ega Ni Namida is a song about graduating, it's a song about moving on and even after graduation things are going to be the same and we'll still be friends and you know, in it's like a TV drama and this and that will happen in the future and, and it's all going to be okay even through graduation. And it's very inspiring and I think that it worked well for the context of Nigaki because I feel like a lot of people, especially me, were very much like, oh my gosh, Morning Musume is over, you know, and like this is really the end of that golden era that existed when Morning Musume was like at their prime and Gaki is the last one that got to experience all that. And so I think to have a song of graduation and, and kind of like closing off the group and tying off her connection to that part of the group, I really think that it was a nice choice to use. On top of multiple other things, one of those things being that in the fifth generation boot camp, before they all joined the group, they had to sing a Matsuda Aya song called Love Nami Da Iro. And so I love that Gaki got the full circle for her generation because she is the last one. She got to sing a Matsuda Aya song about graduation, which is the best full circle tying a ribbon along this package that you could possibly get. And I think that it was perfect that she got to sing this song because it, it really reflected her beginning in Morning Musume and showed a nice closure to it. But for Gaki, I feel like her graduation from A side to B side was, it had a certain level of sincerity to it that Eyes didn't have. You know, Gaki didn't want some solo song, or she didn't necessarily want or not want it, but she didn't do an original B side. Um, solo. She covered somebody else's B-side and did it amazingly. And just everything about it just seemed so sincere and... <sighs> Damn it, Gaki, why you gotta leave? But vocally, it's one of, one of the best performances from A Morning with Man Girl. And like Jacob has said before, that they usually try to just scoot along and move right into the next segment without drawing any attention to it. And I feel like Egao Ninamida did the same thing where it really drew attention to Nigaki leaving, where Aichan's B-side that she got, it was very melancholy in the sense that, you know, you get the, the feeling that she's leaving and that she's moving on, but it's also very happy and poppy and, and things are alright. 
but it didn't really draw attention that she's like, I'm leaving now, goodbye. Besides the pictures hanging in the in the backdrop. And I feel like Ega Ni Namida really drew attention to graduation fluttered through the entire song. So I think this was a wonderful send off to her and we normally don't get stuff like this. So I'm glad that she got so much respect in the end of her career in Morning Musume. It makes me happy, but very sad that she had to leave. But happy that she got the most respect from anybody. So this week, I would like to ask you guys which one you liked better, Watashi ga ite kimi ga iru, or Ega ni namida thank you dear my friends. And Watashi ga ite kimi ga iru is not a bad song, Jacob. I never said it was a bad song. I just said it sounds very much like something I've heard before. There wasn't a lot of originality and spunk to it, but there were some killer vocals from Gaki. So it was a little bit like Aika, and then Ega and Yunamida was Gaki, and that was symbolic of the graduation that happened, where Aika just jumped in, and then it was all over for her after that, and she got nothing. Why didn't we even mention that, that Aika didn't get crap? She got like a half of a line in Watashi ga Ite Kimi ga Iru. And that was her graduation B-side. That's why there was two. One for... <laughs> I was telling Jacob, while while we're talking about this, and I completely forgot to mention it in Matt and Rose show, one, two, three, because I didn't think of it at the time, is that I honestly am under the impression now that I think Matt and Rose show was supposed to be Aika's graduation single. And maybe just Sunku did a double A side because he's like, well, no, I have these extra A sides, so let's just touch them. You know, because the way that Matt and Show is designed, there are very similar um, woes and ahs and oohs that were in Egao, ni Egao Yes Nude. And it just overall was structured um, in a very similar way, I feel like, and especially with the um, even the lyrics of it. So poor Aika didn't get anything in her last one, but I mean, that's what she gets for jumping the gun, I suppose. Insane. Would you have liked a graduation B-side for Aika had um, Sunku more had more time? Not talking to you. And we'll see you guys all again next week when we review another B-side. Peace out. Cut. Take a mouse. Cut. Yes, Roman, I thought you said you weren't coming back. It's not Roman, it's Mariko. <gasps> Mariko, why do you love your back to me? So for you know it's three in the morning. I was I was asleep and I'm already for bed and I, I don't have my makeup on. <laughs> oh, I see. You couldn't be that bad. Oh my goodness, it's worse than I thought. Mariko, what are you doing here? Why do you look like that? You look horrible. You look worse than I think I've ever seen you in your entire life. It's just, your face is falling down. It's, it's, it's melting. You look like a, a hot mess. Your, your, your hair is just missing. Your lips are not as plump as they usually are. Your eyes look a little bit draggy. And your cheeks here are falling down and you Whatever these are, these pillow puffs, they're falling down practically to your belly button. On his ear, it's looking very large. Okay, well, don't feel fine. Can you take me home? I'll take you home, so cool. Okay. Oh, that's. I can't believe I'm gone. I can't believe I'm gone. I can't believe I'm gone.